Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to our, our webinar, Multi-Scale Data Shouldn't Require Large-Scale Effort. Uh, my name's Dan Warner, and I'll be your host for the next uh, 30 minutes. Um, I'm pleased to invite one of our partners, Barbara Grainier, uh, who will be representing Atkiss Gen to talk about their experiences and successes in creating a multi-scale workflow. Um, if you're not aware of Atkiss Gen, Atkiss Gen are a working community of surveying offices in Germany who are running a joint activity to standardize the uh, derivation of their base data to 25K and 50K. Um, for you to make the most out of today's session, please ask any questions that you have, either by raising a virtual hand by the webinar tool, or you can email either myself or Barbara after the event, and we'll get back to you as, as soon as we can. So, um, who are Monspatial, and why are we interested in talking to you today about automatic generalization? Well, Monspatial is a solutions provider and we focus on delivering geospatial solutions to three markets, national mapping, utilities, and transportation. Within the national mapping sector, we look at delivering data management solutions to the likes of OSI, uh, OSGB, Atkis Gen, Lintz, et cetera, uh, and also solutions to central government organizations such as the Rural Payments Agency and US Census. We typically deliver solutions to these organizations on open architectures, and this enables us to deliver a best of breed technology that uses both our products, but also products from some of our technology partners that, that you can see on the slide, so Esri, Latitude, and SAFE. And the reason why we wanna showcase our approach to Autogen today is because it embodies everything that OneSpatial does within these architectures, so driving automation and sort of leading on data quality and data fix up. So today, we're just gonna walk through where to start when you're looking at multi-scale data and what steps you need to take at the beginning to avoid pain later on in the process. Then we're gonna look at the one spatial approach to automatic generalization, which is based on our experiences with clients such as Atkis Gen and also OS and, uh, and um, EGM France. Uh, then Barbara will take you through what Atkis Gen have achieved and we'll have some time at the end to go through any questions that are raised during this session. So, multi-scale data, where to start? Um, before I get into the detail, I just want to be clear um, on what we mean by multi-scale data. So here we're talking about the base data as captured in the field of our imagery that is then derived for a different use at a different scale. When undertaking an exercise to start building a, a multi-scale workflow, the starting point, as always, will be the requirements. But with generalization, this is a little bit more important as you're taking a subjective decision made by a number of different cartographers and trying to still that, distill that down to a set of rules. And this is no easy task, but by building a consensus at the beginning allows any rules to be iterated through and which will then optimize the, result, the results through the process. To do this, it really needs to be driven by domain experts who can ask the product owners and the cartographers, etc., the right questions at the right time to make sure that we get the right results at the end. Then we've got data quality. Data quality is the biggest factor in achieving a high degree of automation. You could have the perfect roundabout collapse algorithm or you could have the perfect dual carriageway collapse algorithm, but if your road network is not uh, is not connected, then you're not gonna get great results. Then as, a, as an organization, you also need to look at what your appetite is for, perfect, for perfection. How good is good enough? What is needed by the customer? What is needed by the business? Um, the, there always comes a point with automation where there is a payoff between the investment you make in automation and the cost, it, the cost that it needs to be done manually. And those discussions and decisions need to be taken so you know the amount of investment and the amount of automation that you're willing to undertake. 
then you need to assess what you need from your manual edits. Are there auto routines that can be built within the editor to help the users? Can further investment be made in measuring and locating non-conformances which can be used to drive the users to where manual edits are needed? And can those manual edits be replayed automatically where you have a high level of change? So where the same change in the same location is needed over and over again. So one spacious approach to generalization has data quality at its core. This ensures that the data is fit for automation. It also enables us to, to do automated fix up. And by having those two things in place, we can then also identify non-conformances to help drive operators to the locations to where edits need to be undertaken. Then we look to do the, autom the to automate the right thing. So this is starting with the biggest wins and not the corner cases. Then looking to, to look at how we can reduce manual edits, as this will enable more frequent releases and also reduce the elapsed time to do an update. Typically, when we are building workflows, we look to build a digital landscape model first, then followed by a digital cartographic model. So the first step, the DLM, the digital landscape model, this is where we would delete and merge the features, but the remaining features are still in their real world location. And then we would build the cartographic model where we would display, simplify and aggregate features. So I'm just going to walk you through what that typical workflow would look like. So at the top, we've got the geo manage, uh, the geospatial management system, and this is where you would do your edits. This is where you've got your organization out in the field, capturing or capturing data or updating data from imagery and constantly feeding that data through some sort of validation to your base data. Then you would extract either the whole state or the whole country, or you might be taking change only update feeds, pass that through a model generalization process, validate that data and pass that to your one uh, DLM, your, your digital landscape model repository. In the case of Atkis Gen, the model generalization is 100%, so there's no need to do manual edits. But in many cases, uh, some further editing would be required. So therefore, you have a loop back where you identify where the changes are needed. You've got edits undertaken by clients that are then passed through the data validation and then back to the DLM database. That data validation would look to check uh, any conformance failures and also identify the location to then further drive those users to those edits to speed up the operation. The next step would be to undertake the cartographic generalization. Again, you could take the whole country from the DLM or you could take a change only update feed, undertake the automatic cartographic generalization, validate and then pass that to the DCM database. Again, it's the same story where, there are, where there's a need for manual edits. Those changes get done within the client, pass back to the data validation, and then into the data repository. And then you would have a, a publication step to, pub, to publish that data. So that's a very high level generic approach to building a workflow for generalization. Um, you can see that it's got the automation of the model generalization and the cartographic generalization, and then it's got the validation at its core within the workflow. So now we're going to look at what that means for real, and Barbara's going to take you through their experiences and their successes um, within the Atkes Gen project. So Barbara's actually joining us from Germany, so we're just going to hand over presenter rights to Barbara, and she's going to talk you through what they've been doing. Thank you, Dan. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the invitation and possibility to share our results using automatic generalization to harmonize production of topographic maps in Germany within this webinar. Um, as you might know, being a federal republic that put the responsibility for providing geodata, including the maps, um, on 16 federal states, Germany faces specific problems to produce and provide consistent national topographic and cartographic data sets. So it is obvious that defined and agreed standards are essential 
to meet the requirements of our users. So in 2006, the so-called AAA model was launched um, and it describes modeling rules for all base data produced by national or state agencies. In parallel, driven by the necessity to produce maps more frequently and efficiently, as Dan mentioned before, a party of 12 states joined together within a corporation called Atkis Generalisierung, sharing this one vision. We want to um, have workflows that support automatic generalization to a large extent. Um, we wanted to have a, a workflow for one workflow for all scales, and we wanted to start off with and update only one base data set, which is the base digital landscape model um, called base DLM. And on the picture, you can see all the states in Germany that are part of um, the, this um, corporation, corporation Atkis Generalisierung. So, when we started, from the start, we had, um, we were convinced that we needed correspondent, corresponding landscape models for each scale we derive. And this is why we have two workflows that um, were created in close cooperation with, with one spatial. Um, it's sort of the same workflow that, that Dan mentioned before. Um, it, there's maybe one difference you can see on the left-hand side it's where model and cartoon run. This is um, one spatial sort of surrounding. And um, on the right hand side, you can see our um, database, the AAA database, where we store um, our um, data. So let's have a quick look at the production workflow. Model reduces basically objects and the resolution of landscape model. Um, that is used as, as input data. As you can see, both model and cart run outside from our AAA database, um, but the results are being qualified within the workflow and are imported in our, into our AAA database after each generalization run. So it's going back and forth um, during generalization. As a result of model, we get a whole state data set. It's um, in Hessen 50K or 100K, um, which is topo topologically correct according to the AAA model and suitable for symbolization and for further automatic cartographic generalization using CARTO. And then at the end, you can see the cartographer. There is still some interactive work that needs to be done to meet the defined standard of topographic maps in Germany. And that would be, for instance, besides adding contour lines and labeling, we need to solve um, some conflicts like complex junctions of motorways or complex uh, situations concerning railway tracks. Uh, let's have a closer look to model. Model um, does mostly semantic generalization such as, and I just put some examples, um, merging or dissolve small areas. That's the example you can see on the left-hand side. And on the on the top right, we have um, one really important um, functionality of simplifying complex roads. So that would be, for instance, if you have um, two or more lanes, you just get one, um, one center line for a road. Um, or we would have um, things that we need for further work with with cartographic generalization, we call it neighborhood analysis, where you have small areas. If you have a row of small areas, you would you would want to keep them. If it's just a single small area, like this lake, you would want to delete it. And um, as uh, Dan said, a model is 100% automatic, so it's just one run, and then we would put the data back into our database. Looking at Cato, Cato does um, cartographic generalization according to so-called data cases that we describe to meet graphical conflicts after symbolization. It's basically a toolbox of generalization methods and algorithms. 
dealing um, with conflicts of point, lines, and areas, and it's all in one workflow. And I just put some um, examples as well, just three of them. Um, one important um, functionality is um, sort of uh, resolving conflicts of, of lines. Um, and it's, we have different, we have different um, methods of actually solving these conflicts, either make lines parallel, parallel or um, sharing contour, or sometimes just um, sort of move, move them apart. So it's a, it's a, it's a combination of line generalization. Um, and then we have um, point data cases, for instance, just dis displacement of point symbols you can see on the top right, um, or sometimes typification of symbols that sort of have the same symbolization. And we have something like, for instance, simplification of areas, which would be area generalization. Both um, model and Kartor are flexible workflows that um, can be built using the generalization rules we have implemented, and um, they can be controlled by parameters. Um, it's sort of like I said, like a toolbox um, that we can can use to do this. Um, uh, the workflow keeps the topology and the modeling rules according to our to our base model and to the AAA model. And so, so out of the toolboxes for model and cultural, we can actually build workflows that sort of best meet our um, expected results. And uh, today, nine of, of the states that are part of the cooperation um, use the workflow to produce their topographic maps um, in scales 10K through 100K. And 50K and 100K are for civil and military use. So this is um, coming to the products we actually um, provide using these workflows, and it's um, basically three basic um, products we we um, have to provide. Um, they are standard, standardized within Germany, and meaning um, all states have to provide this data. That's first of all digital topographic maps. Um, the example that is shown is is DTK50, um, but we have DTK10 to DTK100 uh, or that, that is actually produced within the states. Um, we derive digital landscape models um, in various resolutions um, for map production, but as um, a, a single product as well. And we use them um, to, to do presentations uh, like um, webatlas.de, which is a, a base map um, of Germany provided as a free web map, web, web map service um, accessible for everyone or anyone. Yeah, when we talk about um, uh, automatic generalization, you might be interested in some statistics or numbers um, that I sort of put together on this, on this slide. We start off for Hessen with an, an area of um, about 21,000 square kilometers. And in our base, uh, data model, we have about 2.75 million objects that we sort of start off with generalization. On, on the left-hand side, you can see um, the numbers for model. Um, it's basically reducing um, objects and simplifying. Um, and you can see uh, the smaller the scale gets, the, the more uh, reduction we have. Um, processing time is... Um, is very short. It's about 24 hours um, to do the generalization from base DLM to DLM 50. And uh, looking at CAR2, it's not uh, about um, reducing ob objects so much anymore, but it's more seeing um, that one whole state run for 50K, um, starting off with 2 million objects, takes about 13 days. So being right into a production workflow, there are still some challenges we we sort of um, keep in mind or that, that keep us running to further optimize our workflows and uh, yeah, to even better meet the requirements of high quality cartography 
that we want to achieve. Um, in this context, in context, we uh, need to think about um, map content or level of t detail, meaning what do we want to or what do we, do we need to actually show what does the uh, user need. Second thing would be map design, um, asking the question, how do we want to present it? Um, thinking about symbolization. Then there is um, one thing, still thinking about um, cartographic data models. Um, how do we need to adapt the modeling rules within the AAA model to actually be able to visual, vis visualize data more easily? And the fourth um, point would be updating data continuously. Um, we, we still are not sort of at the end of the discussion or we need to further discuss one way or the other. Is it better to um, actually do a whole state update as we do it right now? Meaning we have to, f to reduce interactive changes uh, toward actually none. Um, so we can we don't have to redo uh, generalization or um, have incremental update, meaning only areas of change are regeneralized and updated. So these are efforts we undertake to meet our vision I started with. It's um, reducing interactive work. Um, it's updating DTK, digital topographic maps of all scales more frequently um, and our we would aim for once a year um, for all the scales. Um, and um, it's maybe a, a step toward providing tools and workflows to, to actually derive high quality maps for any purpose, like different contents, um, any scale, any user maybe, and any time. So that would be something like generalization on demand. And um, we believe that model and Carto could build a base to that. So this is a quick overview of what we were doing in this um, cooperation at Kiskenar Museum. Thanks um, for taking your time and listening to my presentation. So I think this is Don sort of then going going on. Thanks, Barbara. So um, I'm just going to uh, summarize sort of what we've gone through there. Um, we've looked at how data validation can be used to drive uh, and maximize the benefits of automatic generalization. And, and I think that can be seen with sort of the final point I have on this slide where Atkis Gen have achieved 100% automatic model generalization. They would not have been able to achieve that had their data not been fit for purpose and had they not invested significant effort in making sure that their data data is correct um, and with the points that Barbara made at the end around sort of having generalization on demand obviously that the same story applies that for that to happen then your data needs to be fit for purpose and as part of that flow line there needs to be some sort of conscious effort to be checking and automatically fixing up any failures in conformance um, we then looked at how automation is central to the workflow and again Barbara showed how that has been achieved with that Gen, with both the automatic model generalization and the automatic cartographic generalization and with the work that they've done they've built that around an open architecture so the transformation format um, AAA is actual GM, uh, is GML and that enabled Atkis Gen to select a variety of technology so it, they are using one spatial for their automation but they're also using different editing clients to enable them to do the manual updates um, so that's what we wanted to go through today um, there's some further information on what Barbara and her team have been doing on the one spatial website and there's a link at the bottom there and I would just like to point out that we also are offering a free sample data audit that will uh, will look at your data, will run some automatic validation on that and provide a feedback on how fit and how ready that data is for automation and, and for generalization in particular. So we're just gonna have a quick look to see if any questions have come through. So we've got a couple of questions that have come through 
the uh, webinar tool. So the first one was um, that it, oh, it was a set, it was one that I mentioned where we talked about uh, manual edits and replaying those manual edits. Someone has asked if we if one spatial has any examples of where we have done that. Um, we have done this for one of our clients. It was for text placement where they place the text manually and they get quite a lot of change come through and need to update and release their products on a monthly basis. So therefore they didn't want to be replaying those changes manually all the time. So going to the same location, have the same operator make the changes over and over again. And we built something for them where that would be um, played automatically. Um, and Barbara, there's a question for yourself that's come through where someone was asking about the sort of manual steps and edits that are left to do following the cartographic generalization. So um, I wonder if you're able to, to answer that. Yeah, as I, as I said and, and I'm mentioning, I was mentioning it at this one, one slide, um, we sort of get the standard um, cases of generalization we have the automatic workflow, but we have some complex situations. Mostly it's a um, junction of motorways that are um, that have over and un, over uh, bridges and, and, and things like that involved. So this is something we have to look at and sometimes it's um, about railway tracks when they sort of get a bit complex and you have parallel um, uh, com complex situations, sort of parallel light lanes running, but that's um, mostly um, the thing we have to do interactive. And, and since we use a, a, a different text database um, for the first run, we have to do the, the labeling as well. Okay, thanks Barbara. Um, thanks everyone for your time today. Um, so we'll be sending an email out uh, to everyone that attended with a link to this session that we've recorded so you can revisit it at any time. And as I said at the beginning, if you have any questions, then please email them to myself or Barbara. Our emails are on the front slide and um, we'll be making those available later today. So thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.